Hello and welcome to the Ecclesia podcast, a place where we share in stories and conversations about what it means to live in a Christian, holistic, missional community. I'm your host, Jeremy Schrader, and this week we're going to take a little bit of a break from the conversations we've been having around worship because our pastor and dear friend Mike Yeager is actually going to be stepping out of his role here at Ecclesia to plant a, a new church over on the southwest side. We're really excited for him. We're obviously sad to see him go, but we just know that he's going to do such a great job in leading that community. And so today, Pastor Chris sat down with Pastor Mike to just share some stories about the old days of Taft and about how Mike's role has expanded and grown in his time here and, and what it looks like now as he's stepping on to this new season of his life. So without any further ado, here's Pastor Mike and Pastor Chris. So Sunday, we, uh, hopefully for most people it wasn't a bomb, but it feels like You've been a fixture here for a long time. You're entering a new season. And um, yeah. so we thought it'd be great to have a conversation to let people know, like, what's that look like? How do you come to that place? And and uh, what's the history at Ecclesia that would even lead you there, right? I mean, eight plus years ago, you step into this role and it's not, none of us could have drawn any of this up. So, um, so in this next season, Mike's going to be starting a church, focusing on his neighborhood, this beautiful, cool, eclectic. I don't even know if it's a third ring suburb now. It's like, it's one of these initial little enclaves. Uh, it's a treasure in Houston called the Meadows, um, where you guys have been living for the last year. Nine, yeah, eight, eight, nine months. Yeah. Okay. Something like that. Yeah. Um, so I think, the goal today is just to tell some of the story. Like, how did we get here? What's it look like going forward? Yeah, well, it's, you know, thinking about um, even how to begin to have this conversation, it's, you know, where do I start? Because it's it's not, you know, it, it's further than eight years. You know, I've, I've been on the, you know, staff here since 2013, you know, in, in that role that's, that's ever evolved. But yeah. you know, I, I stepped foot into Eglisea back at Taft in, you know, 2007, wow. you know, it's been 16 years. Wow. <laughs> that, uh, you know, I, I had moved to Houston after undergrad there, there in Austin and reconnected with, uh, with Lauren, uh, my, my wife, That's of, we of made. 14 years now. Yeah, exactly. And she had already been attending and she had, she had been coming to, uh, coming to TAF there. And, and, you know, I, I, was away from the church for for a number of years during those those years you know prior to that point you know grew up in in the catholic church and you know we, we've talked a lot about that before but i i did not have a uh much of a, a relationship to to jesus let alone a, a strong relationship uh to jesus at that time and, and it is the the faith of of my wife that that really brought me back in you know she she took me to um, the, the Monday Thursday service there in, uh, during Holy week. And, and that was my introduction to this, this peculiar, you know, body, uh, uh, here in Houston that had so many of these, uh, the, the elements that were familiar and resonant to me, you know, whether that was coming and receiving the, the, the Eucharist together, or whether it was just the, the, the tone of the room, it just had that, that, kind of reverence of, it of did. the mass, it but, did. but yeah. the, you know, it, you know, starting to learn from, from you and, and from others who were, were teaching during that season, it, it just had this entirely different orientation to God's story and our part in it. You know, the, you know, I, growing up in the, in the Catholic church and in my, my parishes, a lot of it was like it, centered around this idea of obligation. Like, this is just what you do. And, and the shift for me was, you know, you would talk about, you know, this, this is God's big story and there is a really exciting invitation into, you know, uh, taking up your unique part of it. And, you know, it begs the question, okay, well, what does that look like? Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. and that continued to evolve. Yeah. Well, oh. and it started right with just 
like you say resonance, right? Mm -hmm. If you can't tell on a great mic, like Mike has resonance, right? So Mike has this voice, right? And has a creative gift. So the initial invitation was what, right? Well, so the, the first thing that really got me involved, uh, you know, cause before that I was just, I was, you know, stacking chairs up after the 5 PM service. Cause then, you know, able, able-bodied young man, like that's just what you do. Um, uh, but you know, I was coming out of a season where, you know, life had gone pretty well off the rails in, in Austin a bit. And, and I felt in a lot of ways, like disqualified, like I, I actually, I, I don't have much to, to, to give here. And I saw it up on the screen. There was an announcement. Uh, and it was, it was something that, uh, had Paul had, had shot up there and it was like, well, we need benediction writers. And it was Spock with the, you know, the oh, live true. long and prosper, <laughs> which I, I didn't realize until well after the fact that is in and of itself a benediction. Right. Um, but I, I thought to myself, okay, this, that's something I can do. Like I, I, I'm, you know, reading scripture, really me, you know, spending significant time for the first time in my life, but I can, I can take a, a text and kind of pick it apart and meditate on it and, you know, form it into something that felt like this poetic blessing for the community and, and something really important happens, um, Kind of, I, I can't remember which Christmas season it was, but I had written a benediction for Advents, and and it was shared at, at all the services. And Lauren and I always attended uh, Sunday nights together. And you were doing the announcements at the end of the service, and uh, and you called me up by name to to read it, and that was so impactful to me. And it's something I've never forgotten, and it's something that I, I've always tried to carry through pastorally. Um, because it's voiced to, to me and to, you know, a lot of us that how impactful that is when you show up into a place where you feel anonymous and unknown yeah. and know like my pastor knows my name yeah. and, and I have a, a little piece of what we get to do here together. And, and I, I think that made a huge impact for, for me at the time. Yeah. Well, and then you read, right. And it wasn't just what you wrote and it wasn't, you know, in those years, Every, there were so many people looking for a creative spiritual connection, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. I don't remember what year it was that we published um, a lot of the great benedictions and prayers that mm -hmm. we need to find that little book somewhere. I'm sure I have one. I need so many beautiful Jamie from back in the yeah, day that absolutely. wrote so many beautiful ones. Such a great writer. Tommy Gillespie, yeah. Deji, Brad, you know, all yeah, that. just so many gifted, amazing people that um, that voiced. Part of what worked, right, was like you were praying from that place of brokenness and hope, and you know there there was a vision for a new life, for the kingdom to flourish in your life and your life with Lauren, and clearly, like that vision has become more than a vision. Like it, you know, God's taken this initial seed and and grown it. So maybe that's part of what we're doing this podcast to celebrate, like. We're celebrating. Mike's a great pastor. Like he's been an amazing pastor in our community and spent time and done the study and done the work at Fuller Seminary. And, and when he was working hard at Ecclesia and lots going on and Lauren was working hard and trying to raise young kids, like hanging in there and writing papers and reading books and doing what needed to be done and has now come to this place going, okay, what am I going to do with all my life and experiences? And one of the things that we're excited about mm -hmm. at Ecclesia is we do think churches are shifting to become more neighborhood focused that there gonna be a lot of little neighborhood churches all over now you know i've told you before like church planning <laughs> it's a young man or young woman's game like it's it's hard work it's not easy but when you love a neighborhood you love a community you lean in and you try to figure out how to serve it and how to walk with people so in those ways we're just super excited we're super excited sad and grieving to not have your presence every week because it matters and when you preach people love it and now you're going to preach 52 times and i promise you it's not going to be as good you're it's it's hard you can crush it four times a year oh the grind but which sean and i don't have to do that anymore right we're in this beautiful balance on this team and uh but it's going to be the seedbed that allows for your next season of growth right so in those ways, we just couldn't be more excited for you. So of those years, like what's 
stands out. Like to go, there are not a lot of us around anymore mm. that can tell those stories from Taft to Elder to, you know, we walk in the day, right? And it's, there must be a hundred people waiting to get a shower already. And um, like who to dreams like that and, and that are experiencing great hospitality. And somehow like we, we were, Eric and I were just shooting a video upstairs for some of the big things coming at church and somebody knocked on the door and wanted to talk to me because they think I can keep this homeless guy from peeing on their property. <laughs> like this is not in my job description, but there's this sense we hold a mantle in this community. Right. And that's part of what we're praying for you in the meadows. Like just be this place. People will go like, Hey, you know, you want to get something done? Like Mike knows who people are, knows what the needs are and knows how to love people. And the needs are different in that community. So just any thoughts or reflections? Like if you look back on what you yeah. learned and carries you into the next season. You know, cause, well, cause my, my, you know, a- entry into like theological study. I mean, that, that didn't begin at Fuller. Like, that, that started back at, at, again, at Taft in the, in the upper room there. You know, we had the, uh, arrangement with the Houston Graduate School of Theology, yeah. and, and it, at the time, I'm working nights and weekends in the you know restaurant business and like fine dining, and and you know we just say that like, hey, there, there's this class that you can jump in and take. It was on Tuesday nights, I think. Yep. In missional leadership with James you know, Dr. Fur, right? Yep. And so I not you know, many I, people better than him, but so I get I mean. to you know be introduced to you know uh, like Leslie Newbegin, who you know, you'll often quote, and yeah. and. and and be put in the mindset of of there is no you know one size fits all answer for what doing ministry looks like. It's all contextual, and it, it comes from being in and of a a place. And and that's you know certainly was the case at, at Taft. It's you know it, it's taken on its own character here downtown as it does at Westside as it continues to do and, and grow at. At Lindale, and there's those distinctives that that really uh, they tell us, you know, what the invitations are. Like we don't program our way into saying like we we enter into this place and know we've got the answer. Yeah, yeah. It's you know I I, I can't remember you know who said it, but they talked about like uh, and this was in the context of missions. Like it would be like you know bringing this pot and planting it in the soil without bothering to break the pot. Yeah. No, you know you're gonna plant this thing and see what this soil is going to to do with with this seed um, that's going to grow it into something that you may never have imagined, right? Yeah. Uh, and and so you know, I think for for me, it's it, it's been the you know I, I talked about having been been seen and you know having the, the those gifts being valued and the and, and for me, you know, you, you know my background in the theater. And, you know, and, and people will ask me from time to time, like, do you miss the, do you miss the theater? Do you miss performing in, in those ways? And, and I, you know, if I'm being honest, like, sure, that comes up from time to time. But what I really have come to realize is this, that my giftedness is, is uh, as a interpreter of stories, you know, whether that's, yeah. you know, written stories on the page or whether that's stories within God's word or whether that's the the stories that we get to engage in pastorally and you know listening to someone share their their back background and their unique harms and hopes and and dreams and how can we you know help to to come alongside and, and to guide them so, toward a, a place of flourishing like that's where I get an, an excitement where you know I don't, I don't miss what might have been it's just yeah, you know, the the calling has become something I never could have really anticipated, yeah. and you know, and now I you know having the opportunity to to take everything that I have um, gained and continue to because of 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 you and our team and our amazing community, and now get to you know apply that to this new context where you know we we moved last fall. Uh, and, and the Meadows Place, uh, they're, you know, in, in kind of nearby, like Stafford, Sugarland, Land, A-Leaf, um, you know, Asia Town Stretch. Like it's, it, there's a very vibrant diversity, you know, in, in our immediate, you know, uh, lay, the layers around us. And, and the yeah. Meadows, the place in particular, it's like what, one square mile, I think they call it. Um, and it is, 
it's quirky and yeah. feels a, a you know a little like caught in time. It's got this kind of Mayberry streak, um, but you've got people that are are genuine and passionate and and really protective and like some might say like a little too protective and that's that's some of the challenge of being able to prophetically speak into that context of how do we you know not only care for our own but but you know always it's not about the the walls it's are we in, inviting in and what we can do and to be together for the sake not only of this neighborhood but for the sake of of the the city and our neighbors yeah well i mean it is it's the most, some data would tell us maybe the most ethnically diverse area in the United States, right? I mean, it's right up there, Fort Bend County and that part of the world particularly. So Stone throw from Sharpstown. I like mean, where it, you're it is. It's, these days, it's so. my hood and I yeah. love it. And I was telling my mom, my mom was reflecting, you know, I live in this building that a lot of people might think it in the best place in the world to live. And for me, it's like the best. But one of the reasons, and this is what your kids are growing up with and all the families here in our church, is the kind of diversity that makes us different people. So my, it was mother's day. And so I'm talking with my mom and we're going down memory lane for a bunch of things, right? They've moved to a new house and cleaning out old photos. And, but we made a connection yesterday. I don't know that I'd ever quite made that probably makes me a little different than my siblings. Um, and shaped me more than I realized when we lived in Baytown, I was young, kindergarten, first grade, second grade, maybe. And we lived across the street from my best friend, David, but, um, I literally can't remember their last name <laughs> and they were my family. I mean, they were, he was my best friend for three and a half years and his mom kind of co-raised me. It was one of those neighborhoods, right? And my mom was working and dad was working. like, we were just going. And so you grew up and they're speaking Spanish all the time and you're putting food in front of you and you don't know what menudo is. You just eat menudo. And then you think menudo is amazing. And, and it ingrained me with this love of other cultures. I just thought it was normal and beautiful. I didn't eat that at home, but I ate it over there and I loved it. And Meadows is one of those places. Like you're going to be exposed. You're going to have a Middle Eastern and Indian and Asian and uh, Pacific Islander. You're just going to have everybody on one street. And, um, and so those are the fun things about harnessing the kingdom of God. And if you can't enjoy that, this is what Houston Houstonians hopefully are figuring out. Like if you don't love that, you're not going to love heaven because heaven's so diverse and so beautiful. And I think I love the fact that in Houston we do. So I think today more than anything, we just wanted people to know like, Hey, this is what you're up to next. And to know that, Hey, we want to pray for you. And the truth is like, you look back, your experience at Ecclesia, I mean, really, your experience in the theater and working in restaurants, Kristen and I were talking about this this week, like in both of those environments, the thing that really makes them magical is the community that's created, right? Like when you work in a restaurant and everybody's got your back, there's almost nothing better than, and you work in a restaurant where everybody's focused on their own tables and not taking care of each other. And it's awful, right? <laughs> people don't like each other, they're miserable. But you work in a restaurant where you really have a team and people go out and celebrate afterwards and, and feel like, Hey, we, we crushed it tonight. You know, the whole st that's such a good feeling. We're pushing our kids to like, you know, work at a restaurant, like get that experience. Cause it, it shapes you. It was valuable. It's, Absolutely. it's such a gift. And the church similarly, when it's working right, you know, and I'm confident as you get the full community of people together there, it's going to have that feeling like, Hey, we're rooting for each other. And when you, you get slammed with five tables at once, like I've got your back. And that in real life, that looks a little different, but it's and the same. That, and that's exactly right. Cause I mean, you know, I, I, I may be the, you know, primary, uh, you know, planting pastor of this church, but it's, it's not my church Yeah, and it, and it won't be, uh, it, and yeah, we, we use this word liturgy a lot and it, and it comes up and if, if that's, you know, unfamiliar liturgy literally means the, the, the work of the people like the, these are the things that that we do in community and so you know like the theater it's it's all collaborative and we bring this this variety of uh, of of skill sets to the table and it becomes more together than 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 these things can be in in isolation of their own you know um like you uh and something I wanted to get to, because I, I, you know, I think this is important, especially you know, 
for for those listening, you know, at at, at Ecclesia, because you know this is just this is just my story, but this is a story that I I think I I would say that we hope for everyone here that that you be seen, that your gifts be valued. Um, but also that, you know, you, you are like, like, uh, in, in Kanto, the, you know, the Disney musical, yeah. you're more than just your gift. Yeah. And I've seen that, you know, play out in, in really significant ways. You know, I, I've talked about my, my recovery journey, you know, and, and my sobriety dates, you know, it, it remains December 10th, 2019. Mm, thank and God. I, you know, when I sat down with, with Ramon and, and with, with, uh, Brian Mann, who was our exec pastor at the time. Uh, and, and, and Paul, uh, Randall, great friends, um, and, and told them that, you know, that I was going into treatment. Like you, you called me later on that, that morning and you were out of town, but you know, it wasn't in any way about like how, how this was impacting the the team or our lead up to Christmas. It was just like, I, I'm no, I'm checking in on my, my, my friend and, uh, and colleague and, and expressing support and encouragement like that, that your personhood matters more than your production for here. Uh, and I, I, I just need to say thank you and thank, you know, our, our community for that. Cause that, that continues to be a, a blessing beyond uh, anything I can arti- articulate for, for me, for my family on setting me toward this uh, trajectory. Like none of this happens, you know, w- without that, that support that has, you know, now it's like what a decade and a half, plus yeah. strong of, of growth here. And, and, and that is our, our hope for each and every person who comes through our doors. Yeah. 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 Well, I've gotten to be a part of creating that culture for the beginning, mm-hmm. but I also get to sit and, you know, eat the fruit from that as well. Right. So, you know, I learned when I got hit by a car and broke my hip and I wasn't as useful to people right now. I'm paying medication that, I think Brian Mann came and shot a sermon with me in the backyard that I was doped up on painkillers with a broken hip. And I probably, if that sermon's on the internet, I, there's probably heresy or something. I don't know what I said. Um, we may have scrubbed it. Yeah. It probably, it probably never got used. It just, I was not useful to the church in that season, right? You, you go through a hard time in a pandemic and a divorce. Life's hard. And people decide like, you know what? You're, you're not a product to me. You're actually a person and um it's it's a gift right we all need it and so um we want to offer it and then when it's offered back to us we get to go oh that's that feels that feels good in those ways so as you make this transition how can people pray for you support you i mean lauren and the kids especially what what would you want us to know about this season yeah so uh i i will you know I, i'll be here for the next few weeks uh, my, my last sunday is going to be june 25th and uh and then the you know transition really begins in in earnest and you know i've got i've got a a, a few folks who are already uh pretty strongly co- committed and others are who are just kind of waiting on the on the word and I'll, I'll be, you know, hosting some, you know, Q and a, uh, little gatherings, vision casting sessions and an initial sense of, Hey, this is what we're, we're thinking this looks like. And, and it may quite likely be starting, you know, just in Lauren and I's living room and, and feel much in the way of, of just a, a small group and gathering around a, a meal and having some study and worship together and sharing our lives. And, and there'll be, uh, you know, more, uh, corporate gatherings that are, are probably going to be uh, somewhat more intermittent, you know, at, at first, yeah. like, especially during the summer when, you know, if we're going to kind of look ahead toward the, the, the fall and, and just see what happens. A lot of this is, you know, it's exciting and really scary to say, like, I don't have all the, all the answers. And, but that's the, that's been the invitation in the season of God. What I do here clearly is, is God just saying, you know, trust me, yeah. trust me in this. And, and that's a hard thing to do, but yeah. You know, I, I know there's going to be beauty from it, and so the uh, the church is is called Vessel Vessel Houston, and uh, and that's you know come comes from this this dual meaning. You know, one Second uh, Corinthians four seven. You know, where it talks about that that this treasure is contained within these these cracked pots that you know were chipped and from from all these afflictions, but we're not 
crush. Like, yeah. like uh, I love that that vision of kintsugi pottery, yeah. where these these pieces are mended together, and you see this uh, this gold lacing that's just beautiful. Yeah. And and these fractures become the feature <laughs> in this thing. Yeah. And and the vessel, in terms of like it's you know this is a, a the seafaring craft. A, this is a shared voyage. That this is something that we get to do together. So I you know I. I, I ask for all the prayer that, that we can get. And, and we know that God is already doing the work to prepare the way for, for what this, this you know, little body could become for, for the meadows in Southwest Houston. And really, and you know, and that this is not the end of a relationship with, yeah. with Ecclesia by any means. Yeah, we we'll are, be, we'll it is one together. mission, one kingdom. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we'll be working together for a long time. Absolutely, and, uh, but we won't see you every week and every in this space as often. Which I am. We will miss. You. I can't even think about it right now. I'm just like utterly heartbroken. <laughs> like that's the part of it. It's all it's grief and it's gratitude. Yeah. Well, the best way to end is just to pray for you. You're a good man. You're a good pastor. You're a good father and a good husband. And so we love Lauren and Miles and Mara probably as much as we love you. And um. We think this journey is going to be really good for him. So, God, we just thank you for Mike. We thank you for people that love him, that have experienced his love in our community and his gifts. And uh, Lord, we just pray for this next season that you'd bless him richly. We believe this diverse little part of Houston uh, in the meadows is just, it's a its a gift. It's a little treasure. And we just pray that uh, the vessel community would be a place that people could find Uh, love and the the beautiful unconditional love of Jesus can be experienced in all of its glory and that you would uh, just guide Mike and Lauren and bless Miles and Mara on this uh, this next path and that we'd stay deeply and profoundly intimately connected in the ways that nourish one another on this journey so we pray all of this together and we pray it in your name in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit we pray Amen. So, love you, brother. Love you, buddy. Thank you so much for joining us for today's episode of the podcast. If you enjoyed it and would like to hear more, you can find this episode and all of our podcasts both on Apple Podcasts and on Spotify. You can also find the videos over on our YouTube channel and subscribe there to get all of our content. Next week, we're going to be jumping back into our series on worship and talking with Paul Randall about grief and how grieving is its own form of worship and an important part of our worship experience. And so you're definitely going to want to check that one out. Have a good week, and we'll see you next time.